Hello, welcome back to the Girl Math Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Blonde. I have some exciting news. Let's just start off with that, okay, guys? So, the podcast is swiftly moving. We are developing and I am bringing on some guests, which is really fun, really exciting. Not somewhere where I thought I'd necessarily take this podcast, but I feel like it's a little bit needed. I feel like, are you guys bored of me just yapping on my own? I love it to a degree, but I feel like maybe I could yap with some people. And because of the industries that I have worked in, I have met some amazing people, which I feel like you guys would benefit from hearing about or find it interesting. And even just hearing their stories, craziness, I don't know. We will see how it ends up going. We will trial it at first and see how it goes. But so far we have quite a few guests lined up, which I thought, everyone would say no. So the way I got people to say yes, I didn't hold them against their will. I sent them a voice note on Instagram DM. And these were, I, I selectively picked out people that I thought were interesting and different types of people in different industries. And I basically was like, hey, uh, not holding you against your will or anything, but would you like to come on the podcast? Obviously some aired me, which is fine. Like you don't have to reply. But you, I mean, I feel like a reply would be nice. And I said like, you don't have, you don't have to say yes, but you can say no. Cause like, when you put yourself out there, it's a really, really scary thing to do. I think not many people kind of appreciate it, but you know, there's some people stuck up in their own world and they won't, they think they're too good for you, which is fair enough. But the people that said yes, or even replied to me, I appreciate you. Cause you know, if someone messaged me, even if I wasn't down to do it, I feel like I'd say, you know, thank you so much for the opportunity, but not really my thing or something. I don't know. Would have been nice. But anyway, I, I hope the dynamic ends up working. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I'm terrified. I feel like, is it going to come across awkward, me speaking to people? I mean, some of them are friends. Some of them are friends of friends and some of them are just people that I met in the industry. So I don't know how it's going to work out. I want it to just be chill. I can't even lie. I'm going to maintain the chill level and that will be starting mid to late September. So keep your eyes peeled for that. With the news announced, let's swiftly move on. So this podcast is actually dedicated to my subscribers because you guys mostly, majority of you came from my binge eating video, which obviously I haven't spoken about for some time because I needed some time to reflect, work on it, and come back and speak to you and give you some more advice. Cause I felt like at the time I didn't really have a leg to stand on in the sense that I couldn't give you guys any advice. I really am struggling for an appetite. It is just the binge and restrict cycle. We all know that by now. But for me right now, I don't even know what I'm in. I'm just, I don't have an appetite whatsoever. Whatsoever. I can't eat any meats at the moment. I couldn't not tell you why. I don't know. I think it might be a metaphobia. I have no idea. But meats don't appetize me. Um, the only thing is carbs, potatoes, maybe a little bit of veg. But even then, like, I don't know what it is, but just I don't want any meat. I just don't. It's the plain pasta kind of vibe. My friend literally called me up before this and said, Corey, I can't stop eating plain pasta. It's just, I don't, I'm on the plain pasta pandemic. I don't know what else to eat. Like it just is the only thing. And people can give you ag for eating plain pasta, but trust me, when you're in that mental state where the only thing you can eat is plain pasta, you know something is up. It's either stress, emotional damage, but the way that I don't have an appetite right now means that I am stressed. And I think it's just because of the whole health scare thing, to be honest. Um which I am on antibiotics, which might be why I don't have much of an appetite either. But also I haven't had an appetite before the antibiotics, which might be whatever I am dealing with right now. I have no idea. I still don't have answers and I'm spiraling. Anyway, back on topic. First and foremost, I want to just tell you guys, food is not the enemy. Like the amount of times I have thought food is against me, food is against me, food is against me. It actually works for you. It gives you energy. It gives you the nutrients that you need. People associate food with bad reputation when, you know, obviously there's foods that can be beneficial to you and there's foods that are not so beneficial to you. But I think it's important to remind yourself that, okay, food is my friend. Like it's, it's a friendship, you know? Sometimes we love each other, sometimes we hate each other, but for the most part, food is there to let me survive. And I think from someone that's come from different EDs before, it's really hard because 
I come from binge eating and then I come from emetophobia. And they're just like, they're almost contrasting types of EDs. I don't know how to describe it, but then they all fit in one for me. Like growing up, it used to be restrict, restrict, restrict. And now it's binge, 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 restrict, binge, restrict. Scared of throwing up and then binge again. And it's like, I don't understand my brain sometimes. <laughs> I don't get it. I've created a collection of tips that's what worked well for me and what hasn't worked well for me in terms of my binge restrict cycle. So this is how I cope with binge eating. What works, what doesn't. What works well, avoiding having trigger foods in your house. That really, really helps me. I don't go and buy loads of chocolate now and stock up for the week. I'm now one of those girls that like goes out for a sweet treat if I really fancy it. And I've literally, when I tell you, I have replaced chocolate for loads of fruit. Like I kid you not, the only thing I've been eating is fruit. I have not felt like anything else recently. And I genuinely feel like fruit has pulled me out of a lot of shit because it's given me fiber, it's given me the nutrients, it's given me the hydration, it's given me that energy that I need. I cannot even tell you how much fruit has really saved me from binge eating because I feel like fruit is a lot, you feel a lot better when you eat more fruit in the body and in the mind. Like I feel like I could eat a whole tub of pineapple and yes, it would be a lot, but it, I don't feel like, I don't feel physically like I've eaten a lot. And also mentally I'm like, yeah, but it's fruit. Do you know what I mean? And there's so much bullshit on the internet saying, oh, you know, fruit is still sugar and it spikes your insulin and yada, yada. No, it literally, the way it digests in your body, so different to artificial sweets, so different to processed sugar. I am an advocate for fruit, okay? Watermelon, pineapple, mango. Actually, no, not so much mango. Every time I have mango, for some reason, it does not agree with me. Um, dates. Oh my God. Dates. Let me speak on this for a second. Yes, they are high sugar content. Yes, they are considered high calorie content. And the amount of people that tell me, oh, you know, like dates are really high calorie. You shouldn't eat them. Bitch, shut the fuck up. Okay. From someone that comes from eating loads and loads of chocolate to then eating four dates, five dates, leave me the fuck alone. Okay. I already know. I have already experienced myself. If I eat any more than four dates, five dates. I'm going to be sat on that toilet. Okay. And that is enough for me to know. Okay. I need to stop here. Dates and peanut butter. Thank me later. If you don't like peanut butter, Nutella. Okay. Thank me later. It's finding ways around the trigger foods and also filling you up and being fibrous because fiber is going to be your best friend with binge eating. That is my next tip. Fiber, fiber, fiber. The more fiber you eat, if you want to go in the cupboards, right? And you want to go eat that whole chocolate bar, the whole packet of cookies, whatever it is you want to eat. I think you should also, before or after, you should do it really before, but after is fine. A bit of broccoli, a bit of fruit, something that's got fiber in it because it's going to help flush out the toxins and like make you feel less shit after for eating it. But also it's just kind of like the nutrients you need and for me, it's like, I feel so much better if I have a few dates in the morning like that. That can be seen as like, you shouldn't because it will spike your insulin. Like, shut the fuck up, okay? I'm gonna eat these four dates the minute I wake up because that for me satisfies any craving that I have for the day. Well, not the whole day, but I'd say for like three, four hours of the day. And then I'll move on and I'll be like, right, okay, I actually want savory foods now. And dates are a superfood. Like they're actually a superfood. So I don't want to hear anyone chat shit about dates, okay? And it's the only thing that actually makes me go to the toilet. So it generally is my life hack. And I will never, ever, ever stop raving about dates. Some people love them, some people hate them. But if you learn to love them, it's really going to save your ass. Like I genuinely, it's the only thing that's helped me with my cravings. So dates all the way. <laughs> um, and yeah, pineapple, I was listing them earlier, but pineapple, dates, watermelon, and bananas. Bananas are also seen as, oh, but they spike your insulin, they're high in sugar. Shut the fuck up. Okay, literal shut the fuck up. I don't know how many times I have to say that in this podcast, but it really pisses me off when someone comes up to me personally and says, oh, you shouldn't eat that fruit because it spikes your insulin. And I, 
Like, no, I literally come from eating a full packet of cookies in the morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, bedtime, bus, club, another club, another club. Like I literally do not stop. So you can shut the fuck up about me eating what I want to eat. Okay. And they always say balance is everything. Okay. With binge eating, it is the lack of balance because you don't know how to kind of gauge like, you know, when you're full, but then you also don't because your mind is emotionally eating. Like, I never know when to stop because my brain is either sad when I'm stressed, I don't really eat, but stress sometimes, even happy. Like, it gives me endorphins. The reason I used to be so addicted to chocolate and I kind of still am, but at the same time, now I've incorporated fruits. I don't actually crave it. I don't crave it like I used to because dates and fruit have given me the endorphins that I used to get from chocolate. Obviously it's not as high. I definitely say dates give me the endorphins, but it's not as high as it would be when I was eating chocolate, but it definitely, definitely has an impact. Enough raving about dates. Okay. I feel like I got a bit sidetracked again with the dates, but yeah, incorporate fruit, fiber, because fiber is going to fill you up and it's going to flush out the shit. Like it just is, and I'm going to be so real since not eating meals. Cause I've had no appetite and just like, I'd say my biggest issue has always been, I will binge on snacky foods, but I won't binge on meals. It's not that kind of struggle for me where I will binge on actual meals. It's more so like the crappy foods that I can't stop eating. Like the other day I will admit, okay, I bought this cookie dough from M&S for the first time ever. I was like, I want to make cookies because I want to, I want to feel like that bitch. And it came out with about like seven cookies. I ate them all. And that then showed to me, okay, obviously I'm not over it, but it made me realize if I have the access to things, I know I can't control myself. So it's being prepared because some people are just more disciplined than others. I feel like that's just the way it is. People say you can learn discipline. It's fucking incredibly hard to learn discipline. So if you can just figure out life hacks, work smarter, not harder, and maybe just put the cookies that you make in the freezer and then take out the cookie that you want when you want it, defrost it, put it in the microwave. I don't know. I feel like that's probably a better way of coping with it because baking is so triggering for me. Baking, if I bake a banana bread, best believe that banana bread is gone by the end of the day. I just got bought a box of chocolates, right? And they were like that big from Hotel Chocolat. Hotel Chocolat, okay? And if you know, you know, these chocolates in England are so good. I kid you not, there was about 20. I've literally just demolished about 15, right? I'm not going to sit here and pretend that my binge eating is gone because of these things. These are just coping mechanisms that have really helped me, you know, in different scenarios. And I just think it will always come in waves. It's always going to be something that's there. I do definitely think you can get over binge eating. Definitely. You can, nothing's impossible. Okay. Nothing's impossible. It's just really fucking hard to do it. And I'm going to not sit here and be like, you can, get over binge eating by doing this, this and this. Cause I don't know the answers to that. All I know is what helps me cope. So yeah, I just hope whatever I'm telling you guys will maybe help you, maybe not, but it's definitely helped me over the past couple months. Like I would definitely say my binge eating has reduced significantly by doing these things. It's still there. It still comes in waves because I de like, especially at the moment, because I've been so stressed about my health, I've been restricting so much and then I'll get days like today where I would have got the chocolates or baked the cookies or something and I would have eaten it all because my body is literally wanting any energy source possible because I've been restricting so much on actual meals and actual nutrients. So it's going to look for fast energy, quick releases. That's something you kind of want to navigate if it's happening and be like, okay, maybe I just need to sit down and eat a steak. Because trust me, whenever I get, whenever I feel the slightest bit ill, dizzy, sick, weak, I eat a steak and I'm good. I don't know what it is. It's probably an iron deficiency. I have no idea. But steak genuinely saves my ass. And I know a lot of people are vegan or vegetarian. There might be alternatives to that. Maybe just taking iron supplements. I don't know. I know a lot of people bash iron supplements, but for me personally, it's helped me. So yeah, finding different 
ways to make your body feel better. Because when your body feels better, your mind feels better. Your mind is looking for everything possible in order to survive. It will look out for the bad. It will look out for the worst. It will look out for the good. If you can't control your mind, try and control your body first because your mind will follow. You know, if your body is calm, your mind is calm. If your mind is not calm, your body's not calm. It's like they work together, but they're so different. Your mind is so powerful. It will trick you into things that you won't even believe. You know, trust me, trust me. And I can't believe that's coming out of my mouth because I don't even trust myself when I say that half the time, but I know it's true. So that is my th food for thought and what's kind of helped me um, recently. Something that definitely hasn't helped me. These are the triggers, okay? Something that definitely hasn't helped me, obviously having access to all the foods. Like I used to have a drawer and inside that drawer would be a big pack of M&Ms, multi-packs of Maltesers, Freddos, big chocolate bars, okay? Big chocolate bars were my weakness. I couldn't just leave it in there for a week. Like it was gone by the end of the day. I know that my mum eats like a little bit, maybe like two squares a day. I, I don't know how she does that, okay? I don't know how personally she does that. I was raised in an environment of like a salad mum, of like a portion mum. I think that's partly my problem now, looking back. And I, when I'm a parent, I don't ever want to portion my kids food or force them to eat food when they're, when they're full. Like that to me does not make any sense. And it just brings more problems down the line. Like if your parents ever forced you to sit down at a table and finish your meal when you were full, I am so sorry. Like, how are you doing now? Are you struggling with an ED? Because me, literally me, you know, a lot of it is from when you were younger. So that's something to kind of see, okay, what was the trigger there? So if I'm eating out and I've spent money on that meal, I'll think oh, I've got to finish this. Even though I'm full, I've got to finish it. And that then triggers me into eating more when I get home. I, don't, I can't describe it, but that to me is a trigger. If I'm sat at a meal, I have a full plate, I've eaten about half or a quarter and I'm like, fuck's sake, I've actually spent like 30, 50 quid on this meal. I've now got to finish it. I finish it. It expands my belly more than I should have because I was already full. And then I get home, I'm like, oh, I'm so hungry. I could eat the whole drawer and I have to eat everything before it goes out of date or I have to eat everything. Otherwise I've wasted money. And like, there's just so many things that triggers me. Like expiry dates, a trigger gone. If it, if it expires tomorrow, I've got to eat it all today. Like I can't do a full food shop anymore because it will be in my fridge or in the, the cupboards and I would eat it. I would eat it all within two days. And, and that's not like meals. I'm just talking like snacky bits. So that's why now I shop I do the food shop in bits. I do it every like three days. Like that might seem excessive. That might seem like a lot, but trust me, it helps me personally. I used to be that person that would just shop every day. Like when I was in uni, I've only recently graduated, but when I was in uni and I was in accommodation, I would shop every day and just get little bits, like what I fancied here and there. Like it might seem a lot, but I felt like I saved money. And also I felt like I wasn't wasting food and I was eating what I actually wanted to eat. I don't know why, but food shopping as a whole is really, really hard because when you're food shopping on an empty stomach, worst thing to do. I end up buying the, the most amount of crap or the most amount of healthy foods because I'm like, you know what? This week I'm gonna start eating healthy. I pack loads of salads. I pack loads of meats and I'm like, yeah. So this week is gonna be the week I start eating salads. It gets to it. I have it in the fridge. I'm like, I really don't want that. I just want a sausage roll right now. Like, I don't know what is wrong with me. <laughs> and no, I think that's normal. I don't know. I feel like your appetite will always change. That's why you've got to work with your body and not with your mind in the moment. Okay. That is a life hack. Shop. If, you, if you're able to, if you can, shop every day or every few days. Those were a few triggers for me. I have some more. I will list in a second. But having an eating disorder in general is really, really hard to overcome. Like it's not impossible, it isn't. But for me, I'm at a point in my life where I'm not strong enough and I don't have the means to get someone else, a nutritionist, a therapist to help me 
So I'm just having to do what I can. I'm having to just cope with it. Finding ways that, that will help me every day, little bit by little bit. And I know I'll get there. It's just a process. It just is. It's not going to be a one thing fixes all. It's not going to be, this is going to be fixed by tomorrow. It's just, I'm just trying to survive. Like, I'm just trying to do what I can with what I have. And I just think that's probably one of the best things you can do. You can only do your best. Just remind yourself, if you finish every day, like, okay, that I tried my best. That's all you can do. And you're going to feel so much more satisfied than you would if you just walked away thinking, oh, you know what? I could have done this. I could have done that. And you probably will have that feeling. Even if you did try your best that day, you're going to be thinking, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't. But the key is not to beat yourself up over it. Like what is the point in wasting time and beating yourself up? You can use that as motivation the next day to be better. Even though for me personally, I say I'll gym tomorrow because I've eaten the whole box of chocolates today. I'll wake up. I probably won't be asked. Even if I do, even if I do go to the gym, okay? God willing, I go to the gym tomorrow. I'll just stick my ass on the treadmill walking at four miles an hour for 20 minutes and then leave. Like that to me, that's an achievement. And I think it really is baby steps though. I joke about it, but it really is baby steps because I think if you're just doing a little bit at a time, you'll eventually get there. The last thing that's really, really helped me personally, and this might have some bad things attached to it, but for me it's helped, is chewing gum and mint tea. And I'm not talking about this to try and replace. I'm not talking about using this to try and eat this and not that. But chewing gum has really helped me if I really, really, really am craving stuff. Like flavored chewing gum, get yourself some of that. Because when you want something you know, you're craving something and you, you know, you won't be able to stop yourself. Chewing gum completely just eliminates wanting to eat in excess. I don't know. Even, even if you eat what you want to eat and then afterwards you have a mint chewing gum, you're not going to want to then spit the gum out and eat some more. Like that for me has probably been a big lifesaver as well for a lot of the time. Because if I, or even brushing your teeth, you know, after you eat, go brush your teeth. You're not going to want to then eat some more. I mean, sometimes I do, I can't lie, but chewing gum for the most part does help. Something really minty like airways or something. Um, yeah, that's helped. And mint tea, because I feel like it makes me feel good mentally and physically. It de-bloats me. And also it does stop me craving stuff. It does take a lot for me to then boil the kettle, pour the mint tea and actually want to drink something when I'm really hungry, like that takes a lot of willpower. But when you do it, you do feel better for it. I don't know how else to describe it, but I'll always have a mint tea before bed, but that's mainly a part of my emetophobia. But also it just helps me de-bloat. I really hope this helped um, some of the coping mechanisms I've given today. But on the note of binge eating, I really do hope you guys are well. I wanna know and check in and how see how you're doing with it. Um, Obviously my DMs on Instagram are always open at girlmathpod. I will link it in the description below. Uh, and if you're listening on Spotify, just go head over to Instagram and type that in. Or my Instagram at Corey Blonde, K-O-R-I-B-L-O-N-D-E, because my name is Corey Blonde. And um, yeah, obviously my DMs are always open. I always, you know, talk to you guys on the DMs. So yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys are all well. I hope you're excited for the... Um, the guests that are coming on. I won't name names yet, but I have four confirmed, maybe five now. I can't wait for you guys to see it. And yeah, I will chat to you on Wednesday. Goodbye.